Jellyfish is Tracy, the Jellyfish Queen. Today, the day you're watching it, it's actually my birthday, so give me some love, June 27th. Um, basically, I'm on a tripod right now, and it's actually pretty large, and I don't know how to adjust it yet, so this may be a little bit high up, because I feel like I'm talking, like, to someone who's significantly taller than me. Um, but let me know what you guys think of this angle, because I don't really know. I feel like you guys are just up high. I don't know. Okay, basically, this is on a brew that I just totally made up. Straight up. Like, I don't even know what this is. Um, this is like a Sultai, like, kind of control, but it's more, it's definitely more mid-range. Um, it runs quite a bit of creatures, it runs 15, um, but it has some, like, control elements and things like that. I feel like I totally play around with this more and test around. I, I usually kind of sit down and build the deck in, like, an hour or so and then kind of, like, go from there. Um, so I don't know how I 100% feel about this. I feel like this definitely could use some tweaking. Um, but basically if you're new to my channel or new to my deck techs, this is called a mock deck tech. I not have just sat on a pillow to make myself look taller. May or may not have done that. Okay, anyway, so this is a mock deck tech. I haven't personally played with this deck. I don't know how it's going to play out. I've just built this for the purpose of making a video on it. So if you're like, you should change this, I'm not going to play this deck. Like, whatever. Let's get into the deck. Um... I'm not gonna talk about the mana base. I'm, I'm gonna list the deck below if you want to check it out. Um, it runs 24 lands, uh, which I think is fine. You could probably bump it down to like 23, um, especially if you wanted to up the creeping tar pit count. I, I do too in this build. Um, it's the only man land going on. I also want to comment on my mana base and say I run a lot more basics than some people. Some people think that one basic is fine. I personally do not like that. Uh, I like basics a lot. I also don't want my mana base to hurt me a crazy ton, so... Um, and I, I think sometimes those other lands are kind of like specific, like comes in tapped if you control X or fewer, things like that. So yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the land base. Where should we start? Uh, huh. okay. I like saving creatures for last, so we're going to do that. Um, we'll start off with instance. I have eight, uh, two inquisitions, two thought seizes. I always kind of group these together because they kind of do like similar stuff. Um, this is like a totally dependent thing. If you wanted to run like four, but I personally like the, the even mix. I always tend to even mix these sort of things out. Sometimes I actually am more on the Thoughtseize, even though a lot of people really like Inquisition. Thoughtseize just hits more. Also, this deck doesn't really hurt your yourself like at all, except for like fetches and shocks, which is very common. Um, but I'm not doing like Dark Confidant or anything like that where I need to worry about like losing life. It's a really important thing I think to definitely keep in mind with how many thought seasons you're, you're running. And if you potentially have any life gain. Um, yeah, I just have an even mix. I have two and two because like I said, this is more of a mid-range versus a control strategy. So, uh, and then I run four of Up Serum Visions. This is not interesting. Kind of got to run this card. It's pretty important. Okay, cool. Uh, then we get into Planeswalkers. <sighs> This is like really juicy. I think it's really juicy. I run two Ashiac Nightmare Weaver and I absolutely love this card. I did a whole deck tech, no sorry, uh, card focus where I talked about how much I love this card. Very underrated in my opinion. What I really like about this card is it's a very fantastic mid-range card um, and it's also a really good control card and it's really good in aggressive strategies because like what you want to do is you want to exile cards to exile cards so it's really good um, so that they have less cards in their deck and less times especially if they have stuff on top that you know of like if they have played Serum Visions or something like that. Um, so then you have the you know, you exile things, and you potentially, with the minus, have a chance to get those things back, which is really good. Um, I really like Ashiag. I think she's really fantastic, or she, he, a really fantastic card. Um, also, too, for another card, it does matter about how many X Delirium, I have Delirium stuff in here, so I did want to bump the Planeswalker hunt up a little bit. I know everyone's all about Liliana, and I love Liliana, too, don't get me wrong, but I think Ashiag works really well in this mid-range strategy because you want to have more creatures. This is more of a mid-range strategy than control, so... There's that, and then I had to throw in a Liliana the Last Hope. Funny, not really so much for the plus I mean, ability. I mean, the plus one's ability is really good, don't get me wrong. But I really like the minus ability because there's a lot of graveyard interactions and stuff like that going on in there. And I like the whole thing of bringing things back. I'm like a huge fan of that. I think that's really sweet. So there is like a little bit of, you know, graveyard recursion in here. So I think that's really cool. Uh, but yeah, I mostly put Liliana in here for her minus, to be honest. But I do like the plus because it is like a pseudo creature removal type of thing. So card's good. Um, okay, so, uh, instance, uh, two of, of Abrupt Decay, and I feel like two sounds, like, very minimal, um, and if you're, you are a fan of Abrupt Decay, uh, you could totally shoot two more in the sideboard. I'll talk about sideboard, too, because I do some 
strange things. I have a really fun sideboard. I actually really like it. Uh, Abrupt Decay is like really good. I think it's a really important card in the in the game. It hits a lot of things. Can't be countered, which is really good against like you know, a lot of stuff. <laughs> Any sort of like control strategy. Blue eye control is kind of a thing. A lot of people are playing some sort of control deck, so I think that's really sweet. Um, I just like it. I, I just really like this card. I feel like there's very rare times where you're like, this card isn't good. Like, it's gonna hit something. It's gonna hit something that's threatening your opponent is doing, so. It's really good in the early game, to, or any point in the game, really, which is why it's a really solid card. Uh, three of a Fatal Push. Everyone's playing this card right now. I mean, really, we jumped on the bandwagon. Um, again, not doing a full four. It's, it's, you want to have your removal and it is very important, absolutely. And if you're someone who loves this card so much and you want to run four of, I, I'm pretty weird about four ofs. Um, I'm, I'm very, I spread myself thin a lot of times and I shouldn't say that. I don't do that. I like, I don't put all my eggs in one basket. I don't say I'm going to run four of this, four of that, four of that. Like I, you know, I, tends to be like threes, twos, and one-ups. That's just kind of like how I operate and how I function and how I build decks. Um, I do really like Fatal Push and I do think it's good. Um, I just don't think in this build, I don't think it's really appropriate to do four of, but everyone's got their different opinion. That's just mine. Um, yeah. And then another removal card, Murder. One of the Murderous Cut. Um, I like the delve aspect in this because sometimes you do want to be selective about things that are in your graveyard because we do run things where it's very relevant, like Tassiger. I think like you need a little bit of delve strategy with that um, to change, to manipulate some things in your graveyard. You could generally bump this up to two, I feel like, as well. Maybe do like two Fatal Push, two Murderous Cut. I don't know. It's just me. But yeah, Murderous Cut's really good. I've played with it for a really long time. Then I, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm full of juice, guys. Uh, Soul Tide Charm, one of love it. Card's great. Um, you know, just for a target monocolored creature, you're gonna hit so many things with this. I like the artifact enchantment hate that you have in this. Uh, and then, you know, drawing two, then discarding. You don't care about the discard. You discard a land when you don't need it, or you discard, like, a card that you want in your graveyard to, you know, get back to Snapcaster Mage or, like, something like that. Um, or you just discard something that you like don't need and it's not relevant to the game. So it's Soul Tide Charm is really good. Um, if anything, if you the first two abilities aren't relevant, just drawing two and discarding one is always going to be relevant. So if you're worried about like is this going to be great in every game sort of situation, um, it's a really really good um, does a lot of things kind of card. I can't think of the word right now, but it like does a lot of things. So yeah, Soul Tide Charm is lit. All right, cool. And then we have three of a Thought Scour. I could totally bump this up to four, but again, I'm just I, I'm very selective in this in this build in particular. I'm really selective about four ofs. I think I have like, do I have like any four ofs in this deck? Okay, I do four of of Serum Visions. That's it, guys. That's the only thing I'm doing four ofs. And I'm not doing three. I'm not doing four Snapcaster Mages, which I know sounds crazy, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I really like Thought Scour again. I think that putting stuff in your graveyard is really important because we have um. Grim Flare in there, which we'll talk about in a bit. Synergize with that, you know, want stuff in your graveyard, and you just get to draw a card off of it. It's really good. I really like this card. Uh, okay, yeah, creatures. I've been hinting at them all the time. It runs 15. Again, it's more aggressive. I really, really wanted to make Coco in this deck work so badly. I really love Coco. I want to throw it into, like, everything. Um, it's just, I don't know. I just couldn't, I couldn't make it work. I Badly. I just can't make it work in here, which sucks. Um, this runs a lot of really good, like, value, again, mid-range creatures. First, I have two of Eternal Witness because this card's just probably never going to be bad. You're going to hit something. Um, and it's also just, like, a 2-1. Card's really good. Really good. Um, you can easily bump this down to 1 if you need to, to, to just throw in some other slot because this is, like, totally... Manip like, you could do Core Surf Crew Fix. I almost thought about throwing that card in here, but you can do whatever you want. Uh, I thought this card would be really interesting, and funny enough, I actually had this in my elf build, and I think I cut it, actually, for a Shaman of the Pack. Oh, because that card's great. Uh, but yeah, um, I cut this for my elf build, but I think in here it works really good. Fongo Shaman, it's really, really fantastic. Um, you know, it's a 2-2 two -two for 2 mana, which is great value already. You discard a creature card to get another creature card to your hand, you know great if your serum visions aren't nice to you and you like hate what you put on top and you're just like or you put everything on bottom and you're like I need to shuffle my library again I really like that aspect of this card um and just like discarding a creature to like get a creature it's just a really really good value you want cards in your graveyard that's really sweet so definitely one of would not bump this up at all but I thought it was like a really sweet twist and I wanted to throw it in here uh card I've been hitting at all all time grim flare card sweet. I'm only doing two and I feel like this should be a crime. I feel like I should be doing three. I don't know how much synergy I have with like delirium. I feel like I have a lot of stuff that I put ways to put things in my graveyard so I feel like it's not an issue. I should probably bump this up to three and cut something. 
um, or just lessen the number of some things. Maybe do like two Snapcaster Mages and two Grim Flares. Um, I just really like this card. I mean, a two mana four of Orzo Trample are like really great. Um, it deals combat damage, you'll go to the top um, three cards, put one in two graveyard and one in the top of your library. What's really good about this too is like if you don't have Delirium, you can like make yourself get Delirium, which I really like about this card. So it works really, really well with itself, it synergizes well with itself. Um, there's a reason this card's like $15. It's really, really fantastic. It's probably also being used in standard too, but you know, for modern purposes, it's really good. Okay, funny enough, um, I feel like this is a card that I haven't heard people mention recently and Again, I haven't really been keeping up with the modern community. Like, I kind of just ignore things that happen, and I'm like, oh wow, the people are playing that card. I remember when Kalidist, or however else you say this, I think it's Kalidist, I'm pretty sure that's how we're saying it. Um, when this card popped up, everyone was like, I need to run this card, I need to run this card, and like, Jund had like a total field day, and everyone was like running it. And then I think it kind of like fell off the radar a little bit, because I think people are playing more like white instead of like not that they're not playing black but i feel like more people i don't know i just don't feel like a lot of people are playing with this card maybe i'm wrong maybe they are card is fantastic um i really had to put it in here i think it was like one of the reasons why i was like you know even if you're doing soul tie control you should totally run kalidus because he's a fantastic mid-range card he's casually a three four life and go for four mana really good guys i mean just a fantastic body really lit um if a non-token creature in front of controls would die you exile it and you get a zombie really really good i love that whole like Hey, it gets exiled, you don't get it back. Um, you don't have that much kill spells and stuff like that in here, so if you were if you were making a deck around Kalidus, which is also legendary, keep that in mind, so don't like put like four of them in there. I hate when people do a lot of legendary creatures, it just doesn't work. Um, keep that in mind, especially because you do have recursion with like Tassiger. You don't want to like have that awkward situation where one Kalidus is on the field and they like, give you back the Kalidus and you have it in your hand, it's a dead card. I hate that. Anti synergies, they're awful. Please don't do that. Um, but yeah, you know, you have that, and then you can sack another vampire or zombie. I don't even know if I have any, like, zombies or vampires or anything like that in here. I don't think so. Um, I feel like now that I'm talking about this, though, I feel like I'm lacking on Gurmag Angler, too. That's another card you could throw in there. But that other ability's not, like, crazy relevant. I mean, y you'd get counters on Kalidus, but- oh, well, he- sorry. If you get tokens, you can sack those, but, like, you don't have any other, other like, actual physical cards. So, not like crazy relevant. I mean, if you want to run Gourmet Angler, I think that's a really good choice, but yeah. Alright, I had to throw this card in here because I was like, this is such a mid-range card, and this can totally be used in modern, that's Mystic Snake. Um, you know, I was also thinking about the other card, and I don't remember the name of it right now, but it's like the fairy, and then it's like two, it's like the four mana two two, and then Glenel into Archmage. I thought about running that card. I don't like that card, actually, though, because I feel like it's already on the board, and, like, your opponent's like, oh yeah, like, I'm totally not gonna play stuff because you're gonna counter it, or, like, force you to counter. I don't know, I just don't really like that card. I, I really like Mystic Snake. Yeah, you don't get two counters of it, like Glenel Andra, but I really like this card. It's two two pretty nice body, kind of does its thing, and you totally can get this card back with Tassiger or other recursion things, and I really like it. I think it's good. Good mid-range card. Alright, so I said three Snapcaster Mages, and I know, if you know me, you know that I love Snapcaster Mage, and I feel like it's kind of a crime that I'm not running four. Hear me out though, here's why I'm not running it. I'm only actually running um, 18 instants and sorceries, which is like almost like a third of the deck. No, a fourth fourth of the deck. Wait, no, a third of the deck. I can do math. Um, and, you know, I feel like in my head it wasn't that many. I don't know, you could totally bump this up, but I think Snapcaster Mage is designed more as a control card versus a mid-range card. It definitely is a mid-range card, but I think that I didn't want to be in the situation where I didn't have enough instances or sorceries in my graveyard. I mean, really, if you, if you want to bump it up to four, absolutely go for it, but I think trying it out as three seems like an okay number. Um, I just don't know if, like, there's definitely really fantastic instances and sorceries in here. I don't know, I'm also not running Quicken in this, which for me is like a total big step, so let's just talk about that for a sec. Uh, two of Tassiger, I mean, one of like the big bombs in this deck, and like one of the really fantastic mid-range cards. Um, I love the whole putting things in your graveyard, getting things back. Um, I can't say enough good things about this. I love Tassiger. It's just every, like, I have to run this card. I just have to. I love him. Alright, one of the uh, Thrag Tusk. I had to, guys. I had to run Thrag Tusk. It was one of the reasons why I was like, I need to build Sultai Control because, like, Thrag Tusk is awesome. Um, it's it's a lot of mana. I think it's the most high mana cost thing in the deck. Tassiger doesn't count because you never pay, like, six mana for him. You almost never pay six mana, I should say. Um, yeah, it's, it's really good, though. I mean, really, 
ETB's Game 5 Life is really fantastic. I don't care what game you're playing. Well, okay. Unless you're playing, like... No, your life total matters. Your life total probably matters. So that's great. Especially keep this in mind if you're ever doing anything with, um... Uh, like fetch lines and shotguns, especially if you're on more of those, it's a really good card to consider. Uh, leaves the battlefield, not when it dies, you get a 3 3 beast. Really? Come on. This card is just everything and more. I absolutely love this card. Um, yeah, really good. Okay, and then I run a 1 of Tireless Tracker. This is a card that I saw in a couple of deck lists. I was like poking around at like deck lists, but I would do this weird thing is sometimes where I don't look at like the. I won't look at like Sultai Control, I'll look at like. Grixis control or like other versions that to see what cards they run because they share like some colors They'll share like one or two colors and we'll see what they're running um And this was a card that was popped up on like I looked at some zoo lists and Tyler Stark was on there and I was like I really like this card. I want to run this. Um, I love the card draw aspect of it I think it's really sweet. Uh, also just gets bigger. It's also like a three mana three two which is really good So this is a really sweet mid-range card. I really like it uh, and then the last card before we get to sideboard is Vendillion Click. Um, I really like this card, however, I really don't like more than one of it. I, like I said, I'm very weird about legendaries because I just have that instance with where you can bring something back with Tassiger and then they pick the Vendillion Click and you have a dead card in your hand. That's like worst case scenario, but like I just think about that all the time and I'm like, that's really awkward and you don't want that. So yeah, I don't know. But I really like Vendillion Click. Um, I think it's a really sweet card. It's a through and flyer, so it's got a little bit of evasion, which I really like. <clears throat> Dude, need some water. Um, you know, look at target player's hand. If you want them to keep it, you can keep it. If not, you, they pitch something, they draw a card. You know, it's just a really solid card, a really good mid-range card, but it's also knowledge. I mean, knowing what's in your opponent's hand, even if, like, they have, you know, just knowing what's in their hand. Honestly, that's just, like, the, one of the most important things. Potentially getting rid of something or just knowing, even if you don't, even if they just, you just keep it, you're like, okay, whatever. Okay, sideboard, I did something really interesting where I run actually one of of everything but one card. And if you know me, you know I absolutely love one ofs. They're really good. And I really like one ofs. Um, and this is a very like wide, I would feel like board. Like I think there's a lot of things going on in here. Um, just because there's a lot of really great stuff and I didn't want to miss out on this. I don't want to talk that much about sideboard just because you can do whatever you want with sideboard and it depends on your meta. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Um, okay, lit. Beast Within, great card, fantastic. Um, rediscovered this card when I was looking at random sideboards that I've done in the past, and I was like, this card's really freaking sweet. I really like it. They get a dude, you don't care, you destroy their creature. Great. Could probably be an abrupt decay if you want to, but I like Beast Within. Oh, sorry, it's permanent, not creature. Literally gets rid of everything. Literally everything. Well, unless it was like indestructible, but you know. Or hexproof. <sighs> or just destroy the thing that gives them hexproof. Boom. Did it. Okay, Counter Squall. I love this card. I if if I'm running black and blue, you know I'm running Counter Squall in there. Um, I didn't want to run that many like <sighs> counter spells in this because it's not really the point. Like I like the hand disruption aspect, but there's not like really any. Do I even run any other? I run one other counter spell, which I'll talk about, but it's not the point of the deck. You're you're playing mid range. You're playing these sweet creatures, and you've got some removal, but you're mainly on that mid range strategy where you're not trying to control every single aspect of the board. Um, I really love counter squall though, and they lose two life if you counter it. It's only non creature, but you have other ways of dealing with creatures. Not many, but you have ways of dealing with that. So I don't know. I really like. It's definitely not good in every matchup, but I really like this card. Uh, then I run one of of damnation. Um, yeah, I mean, really, if you were on the more control strategy, you'd want to be running more of these, but honestly, you know, one of is fine. I mean, sometimes you 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 hate to see a lot of these creatures go because they're really sweet, but sometimes you need to sideboard in more of your control aspects and play the control game and put the mid-range sort of on the, the back burner and say, I'll kill you in a couple turns with Tassiger, and that's my win con. Whereas what you want to be doing in the if you're not on the control strategy, that mid-range strategy is, I want to kill you with... Like, one turn Snapcaster Mage, the next turn Fawn Rush Shaman, the next turn Tassiger, um, and then Vendillion Click, and then we swing at you and kill you. Like, you know, it's that's more what you want to be doing. But sometimes you need to play control. Sometimes you just need to, like, set all those car sweet cards and say, I need to just destroy the board, even if it gets rid of your stuff, too. Okay. Uh, one of a Feed the Clan. I really like this card. I I really like it. I mean, you're playing against Burn. You need some life gain. I I love Feed the Clan. I think it should, like, belong in, like, a lot of people's sideboards. Um, oh, I just realized that the Ferocious 
is only with power four or greater. Oh, what do I have with four or greater? Oh, I think it's just Tasker. Okay, uh, I realize that Feed the Clan's not that great in this build, so let's just ignore that for a second. Um, you know what? Let's just scratch that and pretend I didn't say that, but this would be another card if, you know, I'm really tired today, guys. I had, like, a really long weekend. Um, okay, then one of a Fulminator Mage. Um, you know what? You don't have the red to cast this, but who cares? It's double black. You don't care. You have mostly like, sacking Fulminator Mage to destroy her non-basic land. Really good. I mean, people have really good lands, and this is a mid-range card. Uh, sorry, this, it is a mid-range card, but this is... Um, really sweet. I like the fact that you sack it so it goes into the graveyard. I think it just works really well in this deck. Um, yeah. And I feel like too with this sideboard is there are like a lot of creatures in this because you're, again, you're playing mid-range and you don't want as many instances as sorcerers when you're playing mid-range, so. Um, Malstorm Pulse. I mean, really, I, I, you could totally main board this card, but, um, I'm not a huge fan of this card. I know that sounds really weird. Um, I think it's not, I don't think it's good in, like, every matchup, so it's, it's not something I'd be like, yeah, I definitely want a main board. Like, when I did Abzan builds, I never ran Malstorm Pulse in my main, uh, maybe I did run, like, one or so on my main board. Um, again, I'm not just a huge fan of it, I think it depends on the matchup, I think, like, if they're playing, like, Lingering Souls, like, hell yeah, you bring this card in, because you need to get rid of those Lingering Souls tokens. Um, and then snapping Malstorm Pulse is really good, but, um, I don't know, I just don't love it in every deck, I just think it depends, I mean, sometimes your opponent is like me and runs, you know, one ofs of things where like a mouse or just isn't really that good. Like you want to hit multiple things, like that's the point of it. So again, I just think it depends on the matchup. Unpopular opinion. I know, I'm full of them. Uh, one of of negate, you know, this could probably be like creature, like another mystic snake or a Glenelander if you want counter spells, but I don't know. I think it's fine to have some, you know, actual like instance and sorceries in your thing. I just think you want more creatures. One of a pithing needle, I run this in like every sideboard because it's great. Like this card is just really, really fantastic and you definitely should check this card out. It's really good. All right, the only two of in my sideboard is two of a Reclamation Sage. Um, I mean, yeah. It's just really good. Like this card is just really, really, really good and I really like it. And you need ways of getting rid of artifact and enchantments and that one of the Sultan Charm is not enough, so you need more. Uh, then a one of of Scavenging Ooze. This was actually one of the cards that really inspired me like to make this, and I really want to run this in the main board, but I think there's so much going on that you want in your graveyard. I think you could get away with main boarding this card, though, absolutely, if you took out like some of the like stuff you want in your graveyard for like Grimflare and Tassiger and things like that. Um, but I think it does work well with Tassiger, too, because then you pick out things you don't want. So, I don't know. I mean, you could probably main board this card if you like had room and you wanted to like throw it in. Um, I really like Savage Scavenging News. I've always liked Scavenging News. Um, card's great. Alright, one of of Slaughter Pact. I just really like this card. I, I've run this card in a lot of my sideboards in the past. A lot of people aren't expecting it, and it throws a lot of people off. That's why I really like it, so. You know, a card I honestly forgot about, and that's Spellskite. Um, I really, really did forget about this card. I, f like, fell off the face of the earth, and... I was like, oh damn, I was like, that is, that's a card, it really is a card. Um, changing, you know, the target of the spell or ability, it's not great in every matchup, but I do really like this card. I don't think it's an essential, I don't think it's like a must-have. Um, I think if you were doing some sort of like Noble Hierarch, I think it's really good, because then spells good turns into like a 1-5 when it attacks, which is really good. Um, so I don't think it's like amazing in this, but sometimes it's just like a 0-4 blocker, and sometimes it like blocks your opponent's 2-2, two -two, and it really helps you out. Um, one I have of Surgical Extraction, another card I just really love. I remember talking about this card also when people didn't run it and now it's like $20 and not trying to be a hipster, but you know, played with this card before it was cool. Um, <laughs> total hipster. My coworker says this to me all the time, he's like, you are such a hipster. And I was like, yeah, I know. Um, yeah. It's really good. If you're running more removal, you want to run like more surgical extraction so you can get rid of more stuff. But uh, I think one of those is fine. Again, I really like one of those. And the last card is Thrun, the last troll, because he's really freaking hard to kill. Like, he's really hard to kill, and this is just one of those mid range cards that your opponent, like, you play, and your opponent really cannot deal with it unless they have a bigger creature than you. Which hopefully you've killed all their bigger creatures, so that you, the one can just smack them a lot, and they try to kill it or whatever, and then you just regenerate it because you don't care. Thrun is really fantastic. I really like him a lot. 
belongs in a lot of sideboards. I, I need to like build more side more um what was I gonna say? Build more green modern decks and run thrown in there in the sideboard because it's just a great card. Yeah, as I said, that was it for this Sultai mid-range deck. It's pretty freaking sweet. I feel like I I like lacked some inspiration on it though. I like stumbled at a lot of points like trying to build this. Um I don't know. I felt like I didn't, I really felt like I didn't have a lot of inspiration for this. I felt like I'm always very indecisive when I build decks where I don't know what I want to do. I knew I wanted to do mid-range over control, um, and I think control, in my opinion, is a little bit easier to construct because it's more like, this would be like more inquisitions and more um, thought seizes, and that takes up a lot of slots in your, in your build and more removal spells, but I think finding like those good value creatures I think is a little bit harder, so if that makes any sense, so. Oh, uh, yeah, guys, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!